Hello and welcome to MuleSoft training videos. In this video, we are going to see some advanced techniques of uh, Mule 4 batch processing. Let's take a, a typical use case. So in the batch processing, normally we would be handling uh, a huge number of records that are, that are coming either in the form of JSON or most probably by CSV. A file where it contains hundreds or thousands of records. So the typical use case is to retrieve them and process uh, those incoming records in batches. Say sometimes if you have uh, thousands of records, you might want to uh, process them 100 by 100, um, etc. So then during the process, there could be some errors which you might need to handle it. And finally, you need to isolate the error conditions and error records and then uh, take actions accordingly. So let's take an uh, example of uh, incoming CSV file contains uh, these records. And you are going to process these. And uh, uh, for demo purpose, we will assume that uh, one of the records contains uh, uh, invalid age or identifier value which is supposed to be integer. So what's going to happen is when we are processing this, this particular row uh, is going to fail. So uh, Mule 4 batch process contains uh, uh, some uh, techniques to handle these errors and then isolate these error records and then process uh, separately uh, so that uh, out of uh, say thousands of records uh, say um, seven records failed. Uh, so there will be some questions arises uh, what happened to those seven records. So we might need to identify and go back to uh, the customers indicating that these are the seven records failed and then uh, request them to uh, correct the errors and process accordingly. So how do we do this in uh, Mule 4 batch processing? Let's see. So here is a typical uh, a blueprint of how the batch process might look like. So in first three videos, uh, I have explained uh, uh, how to uh, create a basic batch process and uh, how to pass the input to process those records in this array form and uh, how to set the uh, batch size in terms of uh, uh, batch block size. Uh, as three so to process uh, records three by three and uh, we have also seen uh, how to define the accept expression which is basically to refine the records or filter the records based on the uh, certain criteria and uh, the batch aggregator components is used to take actions like post processing actions uh, of those completed uh, batch um, to maybe log into the records or to, to say uh, take some actions. An on complete even indicates the entire batch job completed and then you can take the post processing of the entire batch. So let's see how it works and then we will go back uh, uh, to see how we can uh, handle this uh, use case we just discussed. So I'm going to submit these six records uh, uh, to this flow where it's processing by batch. So this is the total payload and you can see here it's uh, filtered and only three records are processed. So now our use case is different. So let's remove the uh, filtering criteria so that we process the uh, entire batch. Let's see how it goes. So I'm clearing the log to see how it works exactly. So now we can see the logs after removing this uh, criteria, accept criteria, all the six records are processed in two different batches. Okay, so let's simulate this uh, uh, error scenario. Say for one of the records, we will deliberately uh, introduce the error just for demo purpose. So let's go back to the flow and uh, we can introduce uh, a choice. 
so that we can deliberately introduce error for just one record. So we will say, um, we will introduce the error for the record that has ID value 2. So um, for now, I will give the log. And we will introduce another log here for success. So, uh, in order to uh, make this error scenario happen, we are deliberately choosing this record number 2, id equal to 2 and name equal to Ganguly. So, uh, how to create this error scenario for demo purpose? So, uh, we will raise error, we can use this uh, uh, raise error option to uh, throw exception. There is a, there are different ways to simulate this for your unit test case purposes. You can either use uh, Groovy script to throw error, or uh, this is a simple way where you can define the type of error and the error description. So let's use this. So I'm going to introduce this uh, in a descriptive way. Uh, during this uh, error scenario. So, uh, when payload ID equal to 2, when this particular record is processed, the error will be uh, raised deliberately. Uh, just for uh, demo purpose, I have given, say, email is invalid or um, age is invalid. And uh, we give some type, say, invalid data. Okay, so we have uh, introduced this error. And uh, now let's see what happens. There are some uh, important things to note, but I will run and show you what happens. So let us see if the server is restarted. Yes, it's restarted. So the batch job completed. Let's go back and uh, monitor the logs. You can see that the error is raised here, age is invalid and uh, cannot complete the transaction. So this particular error record happened and then uh, um, the batch job completed. Okay, let's go back. So now what do we do with this uh, uh, error records? So we should be able to identify and isolate uh, these, uh, uh, this particular scenario you need to identify the record that contains error and then uh, log it or store it separate, separately so that you can process them later. So there is a technique uh, um, in a batch process. We will introduce a separate batch step. So we are introducing the new batch step here. And uh, in this batch step, we are going to choose the option where accept policy is only failures. So uh, in this, uh, in, in batch process, you can have a series of batch step. You can process those steps sequentially. And uh, uh, in this case, we are introducing the new step to handle only the errors. And for uh, identification purpose, we can choose the log and we can say error record identified and uh, we will log the payload so that we know which error, uh, which record uh, failed. So I saved it and then let us run to see what happens. It's successfully completed. Let's go back and see the logs. So now you can see all the records are processed and uh, error record uh, uh, happened. But, uh, but we are not able to see the log that indicates error record. So this I have done deliberately. Uh, 
to uh, to um, highlight one of the important step here so yeah, under the batch stop there is a configuration that says if maximum record record uh, failed is zero so immediately if even one error record happens it uh, completes and it doesn't go to the next step because uh, um, it, it's not under the error threshold so we will say maximum two records will be allowed uh, to fail for example why, why this option is designed by uh, MuleSoft team you can imagine here suppose if there are 12 records or you have a batch of 10 records imagine eight of them failed only two succeeded so what's it's, how it's going to go is to go to the customer support team uh, to uh, look for these errors and identify this um, imagine there are a huge set of errors then uh, it'll be time consuming and then it's a waste of efforts so you you decide this threshold to uh, stop or handle accordingly um, uh, so that it's under control so now we decided the maximum failed records too so if um, there is only one record it's still sustainable let's see how this goes i'm clearing the logs and i'm running again it's completed let's see what the difference is now you can see it went to the step two because uh, it's still under the uh, uh, threshold count see error record identified and uh, the particular error record is uh, id equal to two name equal to gangoli which we simulated so uh, here for demo purpose uh, in this uh, error case we can name it as uh, uh, handling error records so instead of logs you can introduce uh, some database operations where you um, store error records and then you can later on um, correct them manually and resubmit them for uh, handling it properly so that's it about uh, how to handle the errors and uh, we will see in another video thank you